everybody. This is what I wanted to talk about. Um, so I will just tell you what happened to me this week, week at work. Um, uh, right now, at the place I work, it's all standing. Um, I work at a Starbucks, and I'm on what's called a modified worker agreement, which is basically like um, a disability thing that says uh, that I only have, like, I'm only able to stand for like a few hours, and so um, I'm able to work kind of short shifts, and that's been working for me pretty well. Uh, but this past week, I had to work for six hours. It was like kind of an emergency situation and had to be there and I was really nervous to be standing for six hours and around hour number five I started not feeling very good my heart started getting tachycardic and I was really dizzy and lightheaded and you know how I was potsy and I was working with a girl who she's a nice girl and everything but I remember like I kind of leaned over the sink and I just said something like oh man Nikki does not let Nikki's pots does not like this five hour standing thing and I found out from one of my other co-workers that she had expressed and I mean I like her I consider her kind of a friend but she had basically told my uh, one of my other co-workers that she felt like I was exaggerating <laughs> and I just I wanted to share this story with you because I guess it's something that I'm willing to bet we all experience having invisible illness and it's frustrating and I would love to pull this girl aside and just say like I realize that it's boring to you but this is my life and why on earth would I make something like that up? Why on earth would anybody choose to complain about something that was no big deal? And it just kind of baffles me that people think that kind of thing but on the other hand I understand it because it's like they can't see your symptoms and it just kind of bums me out that after all this time of explaining to my coworkers like what my situation is that I still have to deal with that attitude that I'm making it up it's not a big deal um they they get tired too blah 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 and that can't, it's really frustrating. So I guess my question to you guys is how have you reacted in situations like this in the past if you've confronted them? Because I'm not sure what to do. And part of me wants to pull her aside and say, like, listen, I heard you said this and I really want to explain to you how difficult it is. But like I said, I mean, I wonder if it's worth all the consequences, like whether it's worth involving my other friend who told me that she said this stuff because I really don't want to deal with any drama. And, um... Also, I wonder whether a person like her would even be receptive to me trying to explain my symptoms to her and explain POTS to her. So it's a difficult situation because I guess you want people to understand, but sometimes people just don't. And oh boy, it really kind of reminded me that it is always going to be a challenge to have an invisible illness. And I guess... I really am posing a question to all you guys this week, which is how would you deal with a situation like this or how have you dealt with a situation like this without seeming like you are whining and you are complaining because I consider myself pretty strong in terms of dealing with my symptoms. Um, I pushed through a lot of really scary symptoms. Most of them are cardiac, um, can't see properly, like fainting, this kind of thing, and I really think that, like, most people who don't have experience with this kind of thing would be very, very, very scared and have a lot of difficulty coping, like I did when I first started having these symptoms. So it's really frustrating when you, as a person, know how much you try to be strong and to cope. It's so frustrating when you hear people say that you're being a baby or a whiner. And I always say, like, if people only knew the actual ratio of, like, complaining to feeling crappy that most of us do, I think they would be shocked at how little we complain. And I know that it seems like a lot to people who are healthy most days of their life. But when you feel 
sick in one way or another every single day. Like, I really want to stress this to people who don't have POTS who might be watching this, and I doubt that's very many, but people with POTS rarely get through a day feeling healthy. On any given day, I have heart symptoms, or my heart pauses, or my heart rate's 150 even though I'm just sitting down, or I can't see properly and I literally have to like sit in the dark because my vision is all screwed up, or I'm really short of breath and my chest is incredibly painful, or I'm so lightheaded that I can't walk. I mean, people with POTS experience these symptoms every single day and I'm willing to bet that if you're a person who knows somebody who has POTS, you don't know about 90% of those symptoms because we really can't complain about it at all. So I just wanted to tell you guys that I really appreciate how hard all of you try because I know because I try as well. And I also wanted to add it is really important to try because I feel like if I didn't push myself as hard as I do, then maybe hearing my coworker say something like, oh, Nikki's just exaggerating, or, oh, Nikki's making a big deal out of nothing. Hearing her say that, if I didn't know within myself that I'm strong, I think would be a serious kind of emotional blow and it would really upset me. And it has in the past. But I wanted you guys to know that that doesn't have to happen to you. You can know that you're strong because you are. If you are doing your very best every single day to live as normal a life as you can, then you're so super strong and brave. And unfortunately, we just have to deal with the fact that people out there don't care to find out what it's like to live a life that they don't know. So hopefully we'll be able to raise more awareness. And I feel like that is kind of a responsibility that we all have to each other to kind of help people understand what invisible chronic illness or invisible disability is without being annoying and preachy, of course, it's challenging. I'm not sure that I've quite figured that out yet, but hopefully together we all can. So I wanted to answer a viewer question. This is from Lessie, and I just wanted to thank you for watching us and um, just give you a little bit of encouragement. And I know how hard it is when you first get a diagnosis, and trust me, we all know what it's like when your friends are sick of hearing you complain. <laughs> And so is your family and you kind of lose all support and this is if you're in a situation like that let's see or anybody else watching this you really need to kind of take the bull by the horns and be your own advocate and find your own support and for most of us that means going online and it would be really nice if there were like real groups in our own cities but unfortunately that's not a reality for most of us and also <laughs> I always thought this, if there was a POTS group, like physical POTS group in my city, it, it would be like ridiculous. Nobody would show up because at one, at least like a couple people would be sick and unable to walk and da 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 So maybe it's better that it's all online, but you really have to be your own advocate. Like I said, go online, find support, talk to people. There are so many people on the Dysautonomia Connection, on the POTS Facebook group, and I know there are a couple of other Facebook groups besides our Five Awesome Potsies Facebook group, which if you haven't joined, please join. Um, so yeah, you can definitely find support. You don't have to feel alone, trust me. Um, but finding a doctor, I know that can be really frustrating. And I think before I was diagnosed, I must have seen at least 15 doctors. And that was, most of them just told me to, that I have anxiety. And I kept saying, yeah, I'm anxious that there's something very wrong with my body and none of you can figure it out. So it took me a lot of doctors before I finally met one who said, oh, we have this test called the tilt table, put me on it. And then went, uh-huh, uh -huh, you have POTS. So um, that was just getting diagnosed. But then it turned out that even though that doctor had the good sense to diagnose me, he didn't know very much about... Um, the different treatments that existed for POTS and he just wanted to put me on Florinef um, and Mitadrine and like that kind of thing and I really wanted to avoid that kind of treatment if I could so um, I had to find another doctor <laughs> even after I found a doctor who knew what POTS was which took years I mean I started having symptoms that I couldn't explain and seeing doctors 
when I was 20 and things progressively got worse and worse and I never got a diagnosis until I was, I think I was 23. So it was a long time of feeling unwell and searching for doctors and it's hard when you feel really sick to have that kind of energy and that kind of investigative spirit and but you have to you really have to kind of be your own personal CSI and when it comes to finding doctors who can help you and that's the only way um, the great thing is that there are now a lot of lists of doctors on um, I know on Dinet and I'm sure people on the dysautonomia connection can recommend doctors and uh, so that's that's helpful but you really have to search around to find a doctor. I mean, I've seen neurologists who have never who had never heard of POTS, cardiologists, doctors of internal medicine, uh, family practitioners, God, like every kind of doctor you could imagine. Um, and I finally found a doctor. And I'll tell you something that I've kind of discovered, which is it may seem obvious when it, I say it, but it really never seemed obvious to me when I was searching for a doctor, but finding a doctor who does research as part of his job is going to work in your favor because that doctor is going to know about new treatments and is going to want to try them on you. So yeah, you're going to be a guinea pig to make that doctor look good, but you know, hopefully you get something out of it too. So that's what I did. I found a really amazing cardiologist who, uh, also does a lot of research and um, he worked with me or still is working with me on um, trying to become as healthy and normal as possible and even though he's not perfect and you guys have to realize like most doctors aren't going to be perfect and they're going to think they know what POTS is but unfortunately for us the reality is that most doctors aren't focused on POTS. For example, my doctor, who I love, is a uh, an electrophysiologist, which is a cardiologist who specializes in the rhythms of the heart. And he has so many different things that he has to deal with in terms of medical cases. And POTS, I'm sure, is not his priority. So I'm just grateful that he knows what it is and is willing to work on kind of alternate treatments and lifestyle changes and all that stuff with me. But the best that we can do is to find a cardiologist who can, or sorry, find a specialist, whether it is a cardiologist or a neurologist or a hormone doctor, and I of course can't remember what that's called, even though Kylie, we've talked about this so much. I've had a long day though. Um, so yeah, the, the, I think the way that you should approach finding a doctor is to isolate what your most debilitating symptoms are. So if, like me, they manifest themselves cardiac-wise, then you need to find a cardiologist or an electrophysiologist who understands your symptoms or is willing to help you try every available option to try and treat them. If your symptoms are digestive, then you need to find an awesome gastroenterologist who is willing to help you. But like I said, it's really difficult, but it can be done. You can find doctors who either know a little bit about POTS um, or doctors who are open to researching it and, and trying to help you. So don't be discouraged. Remember that it took most of us who are not totally disabled anymore, it took most of us years to get there. So if you're newly diagnosed and you're feeling like no one's ever going to be able to help you, that's not true. But you have to have a lot of patience and a lot of gusto and a lot of faith that you're going to find that doctor. And the trick is just to not stop looking. If you stop looking, then you're dead in the water. That's all I have to say this week. And girls, I'm really looking forward to seeing some videos from you guys. It's getting lonely in Five Awesome Potsies channel land. Um, hope you guys are all well. I'm still continuing with my workouts, which are so challenging. My heart pauses and does all kinds of crazy things. I have near syncope, I pass out, I lie on the floor. <laughs> but I'm pushing through, which maybe is a dumb idea. I don't recommend anybody does that, but I'm that's what I'm doing. So I'll keep you guys posted. I am determined to get in the best shape of my life despite POTS. So I hope you guys have a great week and take care. Bye.